Okay, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to the webinar Housing and Deinstitutionalization Linked to Employment. This is part of um, uh, uh, workshops as part of the uh, ESPD series of events uh, in the framework of uh, the Conference on Employment. Uh, most of you know that the conference should have taken place uh, in, uh, in person in Paris, but um, we have reorganized and reshuffled the events so that we could still um, uh, we could still organize uh, our exchanges uh, via uh, online mode. Um, before starting with introducing the speakers, um, I would like to give you a few technical information. So uh, first of all, everyone here is in a meeting mood, so I kindly ask you all to uh, keep your microphone off and to switch it on only when you have to speak, so uh, only for the speakers, please. Uh, you may uh, keep the video on uh, or off as you prefer. Um, this webinar will be recorded for your information. Uh, you will also have a possibility to um, uh, view subtitles. So for this, you just need to click on the bottom down uh, closed captions and activate it and you will see um, the captions at the bottom of your screen. And for those who wish so, you will also be able to uh, listen to this uh, webinar in Croatian. Um, for this, you have to click on the symbol of the globe uh, where you will see written interpretation and uh, then click on Spanish. I know that uh, it may not sound too uh, self-evident, but unfortunately, uh, Spanish language corresponds to uh, Croatian for uh, this webinar only. So without uh, uh, wasting further time, um, I would like to introduce you the speakers to this webinar. Um, we have with us uh, representatives from three different countries. Um, Vasilis Kalopisis from Greece. Um, he, uh, he is the manager of and uh, director of the supported living organization Petagma. Uh, and uh, he will uh, explain to us a little bit how uh, supported living systems uh, from his organization's function in Greece. Uh, we have a representative from uh, Moldova. This is uh, Galina Klimov who is the executive director of the Association of Organizations for Persons with Disabilities, uh, also with a wide experience and expertise on the institutionalization and programs for community-based living uh, in Moldova. And uh, last, we have a representative from Italy, um, the manager and coordinator of the PRESI project, uh, Mrs. Valeria Venuto, who uh, is also working for the Italian Association for the promotion of um, rights for persons with disabilities. So um, I would like with this to give immediately the floor to our first speaker, Vasilis. Please, you have the floor. Don't forget to activate your microphone. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for the invitation, Sabrina. It's great to be here. Uh, although, of, of course, we would prefer to be in Paris, but it's OK. It's, it's, it's nice to be here as well. Uh, I am Vasilis Kalopisis and I manage... Vasilis Kalopisis, upravljam i koordineram u drugom... I will present you our work, what we do. So I will, I will start with a few words uh, about us. Uh, first, I would like to clarify that PETAGMA is connected to the subject of employment of persons with disabilities, which is the main subject of this conference. So I will focus on supported living. Of course, it is clear that all aspects of lives of the people we support are interconnected and inter interrelated. So in the beginning, a few words about us. Our association, PETAGMA, was founded in 2002 by a group of parents of persons with intellectual disabilities wanting to find an answer to the difficult questions that they were facing. What will happen to my child when I will not be able to offer him or her a good, decent life with love and respect? At that time, uh, in Greece, there were only two options. Either the persons with disabilities to go to a large state institution where dozens of different people are indiscriminately living together, or to stay in the family and to be cared for by some relatives, if they existed, for the rest of their lives. Because both, both of these options were, have significant disadvantages, 
This group of parents, headed by Ms. Ioannou, who is the mother of a girl with a disability and president of the board, and the guidance of the psychologist, Ms. Pavanikolopoulou, they searched for another way, and they found this supported living model. Uh, they did travel and they visited UK at that time and they saw examples of people with disabilities who had support tailored to their needs in normal houses in the community. Uh, we had the chance from our early days to, to meet Mr. Bob Rhodes, British expert with, with extended experience in deinstitutionalization and community living, who helped us to shape our vision for the people we support. So that is, that is how the journey of Petagma began. And after the trial period in 2007, Petagma officially started operating the first supported living flat uh, that uh, operated in Greece. Today, we have three flats in Athens, and our goal in the near future is to create a few more supported community-based flats to accommodate the needs of more people with disabilities who are seeking to live a good life in the community. It is a small scale service, but it is one which aspires to be a model of good practice. I will this one, and I will go directly to our essential ingredients. Uh, these are the fundamental principles which give us direction and guide our policies and practices. So I will talk about these principles and I will give examples of how we implement each of them in our everyday practice. And I will also show you some related photos. So it's, so it's very important for us to have a home of one's own, to have choice and self-direction, to have community membership, to have relationships, and to have flexible and tailored services. I will start with, with home. At first, essential principle for, for our service to, is to create and support real homes not supported accommodation, shelters or arrangements or whatever. We use these terms for communicating and for bureaucratic reasons, but when we speak among us, we use the term home. Uh, and what is a home? I think, I think a home is the same for all of us. It is a place where we feel free, where we feel safe, and we feel relaxed, and we feel free to be ourselves. It is the place where we arrive after a busy day in the community, and we take a deep breath and we say, I can relax now. So we support people living in arrangements, arrangements which are typical of those in which persons without disabilities live. Not more than four persons are living together in a flat. And our people have control over their home. They have control over its character and its appearance. This means that their flat and their room reflect their personal interests and preferences. At this point, I would like to, I would like to highlight uh, an aspect of the issue that sometimes is ambiguous. In my opinion, size matters in social care. Existing legal framework in Greece allows up to nine persons with disabilities to live together in arrangements that are characterized as community-based and innovative solutions. But really, how many people, friends or relatives do we know living next door together with eight more persons? Would we like to live with eight more persons without any control about who these people will be? So in my opinion, it is not ambiguous at all. We don't need big group homes anymore. Some photos from the flats. And there is sometimes this, this argument that normal flats are for persons with light, let's say, disabilities, and group, group homes are for persons with more severe needs. But I think that this argument has no rational or ethical grounds. We support many persons with complex needs who need one-to-one -one support for many hours of the day, and I can tell you that for them, it's even more essential to live with a small number of flatmates because otherwise, in a big group home, they tend to be forgotten and isolated. Here we see Erika making meatballs. If you come to Greece, you are invited for, for lunch or dinner. So another essential ingredient for our service is that we value choice and control. 
individuals are supported to communicate their preferences and needs to take everyday choices and plan for their future. We know that these self-advocacy skills do not always come naturally to the people we support, but they need instructions in order to acquire these abilities. So we run self-advocacy groups on a regular basis where our people are trained first to know themselves and their strong points, their preferences and their responsibilities. Second, to know their rights according to the United Nations Convention for their rights. And third, to learn how to articulate, how to communicate their rights and choices. Another key principle, essential ingredient for us is community membership. Uh, at this point, we need to make a clear distinction between the notion of being in the community and being a part of the community. Being in the community points only to physical presence. People can live in the community and experience segregation, isolation, and loneliness. We support our tenants to fully participate in the mainstream of community life. Individuals have opportunities to join groups, organizations, to use local community resources and generic services. They are out in the community every day, go shopping, cafe to cafeterias, to tavernas, to museums, to cinemas, to theaters. We go to local physiotherapists, to the local library, to the local swimming pool, to the local art therapy center, to a local horse riding club. This is a picture from last summer in a, from a local festival where some of uh, the people who support participated. For us, community membership means being known as an individual, a unique person, and not as a label, as a consumer of services or the recipient of another's charity. And I always feel really great when I go out with the people that we support and everyone in the neighborhood, for example, the butcherman or the pharmacist or the, pe or the person living, living next door, they know our people and they call them by, by their first name. This is a cafeteria not very far away from home and this is from holidays. So another essential ingredient for our, for our approach is that we value relationships. We believe that they are the key to a good life. So the first thing is to maintain existing relationships. Individuals have family, have friends, have schoolmates, have neighbors. They didn't come from the moon to the flat where they are living now. It is essential to keep these relationships alive because they enrich life and they safeguard quality and safety. Paid staff can never replace natural, loving relationships. But what we can do is to facilitate the maintenance of existing relationships and the development of new meaningful relationships with flatmates, with family members, with other community members. New relationships are always built around common interests. To do so, we follow the circles of friends or circles of, of support methodology. This is a relationship-based method of organizing things around the person. The circles of support methodology intentionally mimics the natural ways that people build and use social networks in their lives. For the person who support, it is sometimes difficult to build such networks naturally. So a paid members of, member of staff, of staff sorry, named community connector or facilitator undertakes the role to track the person's connection and involve people that know and care about the person in their circle. The members of the circle are not paid. They are there because they like the person and because they feel a strong commitment to be a part of a team that cares for him or her. The circle has a role of being an advocate for the person and doing ordinary things out of friendship, like visiting or going out for a coffee. And in longer terms, if some real strong relationship of love and care develop, some members of a circle of support, they might be prepared to stand up for the person in the good and the bad moments of his or her life.
Another, finally, a last but not least essential ingredient of our service is flexibility. We don't believe the one size fits all approach. We follow a person centered approach and we provide, we provide support that is flexible and tailored to the changing needs and preferences of our people. Our support is based on an individual plan which is developed through a person centered planning process. A person-centered plan is not a piece of paper. It is the actions agreed by a group of people thinking and working together to create a better life with the focus person. We sit around the big table and we focus on the strong points of, of the individual and, to, and, and on the opportunities they have to increase their abilities, confidence and quality of life. In the process of personal planning, we also include a risk management procedure. It is important to acknowledge the fact that we all take risks in our lives and people with disabilities, they also have the right to take risks, but at the same time, have a mechanism of deciding which risks are essential for the person and, and which precautionary measures should be taken. Finally, my last slide is about the challenges that we have for, in, for the future, there are many, many challenges ahead, but I would choose two which I think are important. The first is to manage, as we evolve bureaucratically into a more organized form of service, not to lose our immediacy and our collective spirit. And second, to develop also new, more flexible services, which will address the needs of people with support in various settings. For example, like respite homes or personal assistant services. So that's all from me. Uh, from my side, thank you very much for watching and I'm at your disposal for any kind of question. Thank you, Vasilis. Uh, that was very, very interesting. Um, for uh, the participants, I would like to remind you that we will share with you uh, all the participation at the end of these events, so you will also receive the information about uh, Vasily's presentation. Uh, before moving on, I will quickly get, um, I, I quickly have a, a question for you, Vasilis, mm -hmm. from one of the participants mm -hmm. uh, from the chat. So the question is, uh, where did um, the persons live before they moved to this supported housing uh, flats? And uh, uh, whether you also provide or uh, are connected to some sort of uh, supported employment service? Yes. So the persons that we support now, they all, they all came from, from their families. Uh, they didn't come from, the, none of them came from institutions. Uh, and uh, at the moment we don't, uh, we don't uh, have like a supported employment services, but we are connected with other agents that provide such services. Okay, and uh, one last question. Um, how were the people chosen to, to live in these supported unit uh, flats? Uh, you mentioned they were, uh, um, they were living with families before, but uh, uh, was there any specific process that you followed to admit persons in these flats? Yes, there was, is, there any, uh, as, was there any fee as well to, to be admitted? Entry uh, fee? Uh, the, the, we, have a, we have a specific process of evaluating the people who applied and want to want to join us and we have to see if uh, they want to join and uh, we have to see how they match with other people that are living inside in the flats and we have to ask the people who are living there as well uh, what they want and uh, in case we create a new flat uh, we have to fix like a, a, a group that match very well together and regarding the fees uh, at the moment, uh, there, there is a daily allowance provided by the National Health uh, Organization, which covers the, like the big, uh, almost uh, all of the expenses of our service. But there is a small contribution from parents as well. But the big, the, the majority of the expenses is covered from uh, from the National Health Service. 
Okay, so um, if there are any further questions, please do not hesitate to type them in the group chat. Um, we will have more time for questions later, but um, I will move now to the next speaker, uh, Galina. Galina, please um, tell us a bit uh, your project and uh, um, your practice from Moldova. Uh, my name is Galina Klimov and uh, I say hello to all the participants from, from the conference um, from the Republic of Moldova. Uh, it is an honor for me to participate and to present experience of, uh, for desensitization in the Republic of Moldova for all the participants. Um, thank you very much to ESPD, to LADEPT for this conference. and. Um, I'd like to thank the uh, member of uh, Alliance of Organization for People with Disabilities for practices and experience offered for me uh, that I could uh, um, offer to you all this uh, uh, lesson learned, especially for leading organization Kiston Moldova. Um, now I will do the screen share of my uh, uh, presentation. It is Okay, yeah. Um, a little bit about the history of organization. Uh, Alliance of Organization is uh, based on 2007, and um, at those days, uh, it consists on uh, 13 organizations, uh, civil society organization. They decided to. Um, established several uh, strategic uh, goals to build uh, capacity, uh, capacity of members in order to make it a civil society action force uh, uh, in, uh, co in collaboration with uh, authorities of Moldova to promote the rights of persons with disabilities, to advocate and uh, to develop a, a functional uh, partnership and to change of course, the attitude towards the person with disabilities. Um, our mission is um, that people with disabilities from Moldova are socially integrated and provided with equal opportunities to realize their potential. potential. But we are still on the road uh, to fully inclusive community with equal opportunity for all. I will uh, uh, do uh, on an overview of creating an inclusive community in Moldova. Uh, in period uh, uh, from the 2007 till 2008 uh, uh, and, and before, in Moldova was a um, um, uh, occurred, uh, you can see the change uh, that occurred in Moldova. Uh, the, uh, prior um, prior uh, uh, mainly practiced the medical, uh, the medical modding of caring of people with disabilities, uh, which mainly based uh, in the inclusive, in the residential institutions. Uh, more than uh, 2,000 and uh, of people uh, all um, uh, placed in the big, thick, big uh, uh, institu residential institutions and uh, inclusive uh, legislative framework for development of social service uh, has not been developed. Uh, there are no, there are no social uh, services developed and uh, children with disabilities uh, didn't attend uh, the uh, mainstreaming uh, school. Uh, there was um, study just in special residence, residential school. Uh, biggest, uh, largest transformation uh, took, uh, play, took place between uh, 2008 and uh, 2015, and uh, along uh, with the initiative uh, Moldova and uh, uh, through the um, program uh, initiated by Kiston Moldova, Community for World, uh, was uh, developed uh, the 
was tra uh, transitioned from the medical model to the uh, social model. Um, I uh, would like to mention that in uh, 2010, the Republic of Moldova ratified the uh, Convention of, for people on the Rights of People with Disabilities, and uh, many uh, changes uh, um, was obliged uh, uh, the uh, authorities to be uh, responsible for the uh, do all the changes in the community in the society in order to assure the rights of people with disabilities. Um, I would like to mention that uh, in those periods um, was developed uh, the framework, uh, legal framework and the policy framework for the social inclusion. The first uh, uh, law for social integration, the first strategy for social integration. And um, uh, was developed uh, many of uh, community-based uh, services, uh, such as community homes, support living, sharing living, foster care, mobility team, and respite uh, services. More than 150 persons uh, was moved from the residential institution to the community. Um, in collaboration between Keystone Services and other NGOs uh, with the uh, Ministry of Social Protection uh, was developed uh, um, licensing and accreditation mechanism and all the services was accredited. Um, the other steps uh, to the decentralization was to capacity building of the service personnel. Uh, because uh, those services uh, and those experience was the first in Moldova and uh, uh, it was necessary to um, offer support to the state government to uh, form this personnel. Uh, after that was developed uh, uh, several uh, uh, movements of uh, groups of self-advocates uh, um, by persons with disabilities and uh, by association of parents of persons with disabilities. Uh, and those, uh, all those uh, uh, actions uh, 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 reduce uh, stigma and discrimination uh, for the um, person with disabilities. The other changes uh, that uh, uh, the other changes uh, I can uh, mention in during the period from the 2016 till now, uh, it is that uh, was elaborated the, the second uh, program for social inclusion and the program for um, uh, disinstitutionalization. Um, also uh, was approved a new mechanism for uh, disability determination which is uh, more uh, um, it's near to the it's closely to the uh, social uh, approach already um, it was established an agency for social assistance and uh, this uh, agency um, with uh, uh, partnership with uh, NGOs, especially Kista Moldova, uh, started to uh, buy the homes in order to develop the community-based uh, services for persons with disability, which is uh, one of the new experience in Moldova. Um, that's uh, uh, offered that next uh, uh, 2017 people were transferred to the community services. Uh, I, uh, okay, and uh, uh, in order to uh, mention what kind of uh, keys uh, um, offered this uh, change, uh, offered the sustainable change of uh, disinstitutionalization and lead uh, and uh, conduct our person to the employment. 
um, starting with individual uh, level, I would mention uh, comprehensive um, comprehensive needs based uh, need based uh, diagnostic and support, building relationship with family, neighborhood, and uh, community and members, social integration based on philosophy of valorization of social role, development of auto, uh, abilities of people with disabilities and uh, their involvement in the activities to project uh, protect their rights. And uh, at the community level, uh, I would mention um, awareness raising and community support, uh, community stakeholder capacity building, uh, designing needs based service, association of people with disabilities and their families to promote their rights. At the society level, also, there are several uh, points I would mention. Uh, raising awareness uh, and uh, promoting social inclusion of people with disabilities. Development of uh, legal framework in accordance with CRPD. Uh, development of mechanism for monitoring and quality services strengthening the capacity of national authorities, of civil society organization and media organization, organizations, involving, involving the residential institution in the reform process. And also it's a very important interaction with the other civil society organization um, to this process. Um, here, yeah, um, I will present a, a little bit of history of uh, uh, Marine Andronaki. Um, uh, the guy, uh, the guy uh, lived uh, in the institution more than 10 years. And uh, we've um, been supported by the uh, Keystone uh, uh, team. Uh, he decided to come out and uh, from the came out of a residential institution and uh, to started uh, uh, living in the community. Um, at the beginning, he lived in the um, uh, community um, home, and uh, after that. Uh, after many trainings, uh, supports from the Keystone team, uh, he um, reached out the, uh, different abilities and uh, um, um, decided to live independ independently. Uh, here you can see that uh, he started to work uh, painting uh, the toys and uh, at the moment he uh, has a family and a small baby already. It's a success but uh, of, uh, in the marine life, but it, uh, in, it is uh, uh, very hard and uh, uh, long work with uh, uh, marine uh, and uh, of course involving uh, him in all decision uh, process. Um, if uh, we will- Alina, talk, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I ask you to uh, go to the conclusions so that um, because oh, we are, is, you are is, running out is, of time? Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. It is the already conclusions. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I would say that uh, inclusive living it's uh, not uh, just uh, mm, it's a systemic approach. I would say uh, because. Uh, um, having the experience of our uh, organizations uh, we saw that uh, they developed uh, not just serv services but uh, developed a framework of, for this uh, legal and policy frameworks um, uh, collaborate with authorities uh, and uh, strengthened uh, forces of all civil society organizations um, in order to share the practices and form them 
to um, um, use all this positive experience in their activities. At the moment, um, in uh, Moldova, we have uh, more than uh, 100 uh, civil uh, community-based services and, uh, and um, developed uh, by civil society organization in partnership with local and central authorities. And uh, further after that, uh, civil society organization will support all this uh, action by uh, uh, monitoring uh, advocacy for the accessibility, uh, for the uh, develop uh, all the uh, other uh, legal and uh, policy framework in order to ensure the employment already of these people, um, professional um, education, and uh, of course to have a, a good uh, and uh, um, life with equal opportunities for all. I also prepared here a movie, but uh, you will have possibility to see later because all the presentation, as uh, Sabrina mentioned, will be offered for participants. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kalina. That was very um, useful and, and relevant as always. Um, can I ask you to close your screen yes. sharing? Yeah, okay. Just a moment, please. And I have one quick question for you. Uh, do you have experience with, um, uh, the, um, with institutions? Uh, did you work with uh, institutions while uh, uh, deinstitutionalizing uh, uh, individuals and, uh, and then supporting them in community-based living settings? And what uh, is your experience so far, if you can briefly? Yeah say a few words on this. Uh, as a representative of uh, Alliance, I would uh, mention the experience uh, uh, that we had uh, during two projects uh, that we uh, developed with, uh, in partnership with Kiso Moldova, Soros uh, Moldova, and uh, other two organizations. Uh, uh, we um, monitored, um, we do the evaluation and the monitoring of the rights of uh, persons with disabilities in the residential institutions. And uh, we prepared a report uh, about the situation in these institutions. Um, I would say the um, managers of institution was open to offer us this possibility to uh, come in in institutions. And uh, these reports, uh, um, uh, recommendations for, of these reports uh, will, um, uh, uh, at the base of the, our advocacy activities uh, in the present and the, in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you for your contribution and I remind uh, everyone again that the presentation will be made available um, after the events. So I would like to uh, give the floor now to our last speaker from Italy, um, Valeria Venuto. She will uh, um, introduce to us um, a project um, which is meant to support people to, um, in, their, uh, in their path on to employment. Um, Valeria, you have the floor. You have to unmute your microphone, I believe. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes? yes? Okay. Well. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Sabrina, for your introduction. First of all, I'd like to say something about this awful moment. I'm, I come from Italy. My country, of course, no less than other countries, is suffering from this lockdown, this marginalization, this loneliness. The coronavirus touched everybody in the same way, in the same moment, and everywhere. Nobody, none excluded. But never before, the whole world has been so united. The differences are gone about race, country, gender, hate, all kinds of differences have disappeared. And everyone can do something to continue this cooperation, to continue to feel each other united, to fight the same enemy. Today the enemy is the one virus, but tomorrow, as, as today, 
we have to stay together to fight to break the wall of marginalization because also this war is winnable if everyone fights from the same side. So thanks again for uh, this invitation. I'd like to share with all of you my presentation, just a moment. I talk on behalf of AITH CISAL. The AITH CISAL is an association, association for the protection of people, the young association, joined to CISAL, Italian uh, Confederation of Autonomous Workers Union, the fourth in Italy, based in Rome with 1,700,000 members. The association was created with the aim of promoting and implementing social solidarity projects, including the implementation of socio-educational and cultural uh, initiative of theme of disability. The new project of the association is called Presi. I'm the Presi project manager. The Presi project started eight months ago and it should have ended on May, but due to the coronavirus, we had to stop it. Anyway, uh, we have to conclude the project until the end of the year, but today we can show a draft of a digital application, which will be the focus of this project. The object is to uh, improve, or uh, I think it's better say to try to improve the work integration of people with disabilities, promote employment, offer more favorable conditions for, the, for them to enter in uh, the labor market. The Prezi project's main goal is to find efficient methodology to promote the entry in the labor market of people with different abilities. There are signed into the employment list pursuant to law 6899. In order to improve their quality of life and guarantee their sustainability in the future, the project's focus is to carry out the following activity. Matching uh, between the labor supply and demand optimizing the services existing into the territory, elaboration of a standard model to optimize uh, the same uh, existing service uh, in Italy, development and diffusion of a, di a digital uh, application. So, um, since we have a little time available, I, I think it's better to skip all topics about the European framework. I'm sure everyone in this audience knows the policy, the European Charter of the Rights, the UN Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disability, and the other papers. So, okay. I'd like to, to talk about the Italian context. In Italy, people with disability are more than 3 million, including 2.2 2 million and half elderly. The share of women is higher than that of men. 7% was almost per person. In more than half of the cases, 55% uh, uh, of people have many types of functional problems. Two million are considered to disabled, while almost uh, 540,000 are aged under 65, and mostly of them live in the southern regions of the country. People with disability have an employment rate by around 35%, again 66 for the world population. The, the main law uh, on the employment of disabled is the law number 6899. It's a very old law. It uh, was uh, written 20 years ago. And uh, this law was aimed at the regulation and promotion of the employment of persons with disabilities delegated to regions the management, the management of the labor market. A training scheme is made available to both disabled workers and the job seekers under this law. In order to support employers, white disabled people, um, um, the law number six offers bonus on social security tax fee and funding scheme to adapt the working conditions. This scheme is set depending on the employee's disability level and, it is, and it's financed by National Fund for the Right to Work of People with Disabilities. Private and public sector employers both are based on the sites of their workforces. Uh, required to apply a certain percentage of disabled workers. So, workplaces uh, of uh, 50 to 35 employees must have at least one disabled uh, worker. At least two disabled workers must be hired in a workplace of 36 or 50 employees. 
employees with more than 50 employees must meet a 7% disability employment quota. Employers in an unfavorable economic situation may be extinct, extinct, sorry, from meeting the target or paying the compensation fee until their situation improves. Otherwise, employers who do not meet the disability employment target must pay a compensation fee to a specific fund, uh, a kind of ad administrative fines. Law number 689 has several physicalities. This, uh, the social and labor inclusion of people with disability in Italy is well regulated, but it's an old law, not suitable, uh, was written 20 years ago. There are a lot of difficulties in the application of the law. Gender gap, procedure for labor inclusion, lack of information on the procedures on the organizational context of the workplace. Nominal call, training activities seem to not work very well. Targeted employment, only a small part of graduates reach the benefits offered by the legislation. Of them, just 40% find the job. Uh, of this percentage, 65 job through by some insult, uh, 26 uh, through university, school, our network, and just only uh, 14 find job thank you to the law. Uh, the, this uh, uh, territorial framework convention, this convention are very often delegated to local social cooperatives. This creates the situation that the obligation to our disabled goes in charge of the cooperative. At the end of the day, the employers, the companies, the enterprise prefer to pay the, administ the administrative fines rather than to white people with disabilities. This is the Italian situation. Um, our association to the Prezi project creates a digital support with a purpose to help employment of the people with disability in the labor market. Certainly, everybody knows LinkedIn app. In my country is the most important platform to find a job. So the original idea is building one similar platform, one place where job supply and demand, a specific job offer and specific demand meet. We would insert in that digital app different information about a specific draft, a specific law to keep, to keep employers for one end and people uh, with different ability for the other side updated about the various uh, opportunity, uh, job opportunities. Of course, the regular information about their curricula, uh, but more details, and based on their ability, and possibly if there are about past work experience. The digital hub set out by uh, Prezi Project is aimed to uh, at, uh, help people with disability to think about their career projects, help enterprise to find the right disabled people to hire. This is the abstract. Uh, the, that the digital application will be a draft law. In this home page, you can find two areas, one for employers and one for employees. Both of them have to sign up. It's possible to uh, search job offer, job demand, on basis on the, uh, on the location and the types of activities. And uh, if you want, you can fill out a space to upload the video um, with a short introduction about, about themselves. This is an overview about the last job classified, the complete of information about the offer, wage per day, kind of job, skills, and the other usual uh, information. So, this is the Prezi project. Uh, me and all my team worked a lot to achieve for uh, our purpose. All of us used our ability, skills, passion, but above all, above all earth. So, we hope this application improved the law 68 and uh, could make a contribution to overcome um, some obstacles. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valeria. Great. So it was very uh, interesting also to hear about uh, a very technological uh, example of how we can uh, uh, bring uh, people with disabilities closer to the labor market and uh, to ensure that there is a, a place for them as well in uh, 
uh, in employment life. Um, as you uh, could see from the presentations uh, that uh, were presented today, uh, we had example of housing, uh, um, living uh, options, but also examples of uh, um, how to promote and to uh, uh, further um, achieve employment for persons with disabilities. Um, as ESPD, we think that all these services are part of a spectrum of essential services that need to be provided to persons with disabilities. Uh, so often without housing, uh, it is uh, very unlikely or almost impossible, I would say, to find a job. But at the same time, without a job, it's also very difficult to, uh, to, to benefit from, uh, from decent uh, and proper housing. Uh, so this is why we, we had decided to bring uh, uh, these examples together and, and to show them uh, during this uh, webinar. Um, I don't know if there are other questions from the participants so far. We still have a few minutes. Uh, if anyone would like to, to ask something quickly to the, to, the present, to, the, to the speakers. And you can do so by typing your question in the chat. Or... Uh, raising your hand in the list. No? If not, um, I would like to uh, then pass the floor to our rapporteur. I haven't introduced her uh, to you yet, uh, Constantina. Can you hear us? Yes, yes. hello. Constantina is the rapporteur of our workshop. Uh, she. Uh, has been listening carefully to all your presentations and she has collected a few preliminary messages that will be uh, brought then to the to the larger audience and um, of course uh, this is just a summary that we are making but um, I repeat it again the presentations will be uh, made available uh, at a later stage. Constantina if you want to come in. Yes, thank you so much. I would like also to thank the speakers for their contribution to the workshop. Uh, first of all, I would like to share with you some key messages. Um, uh, all speakers showcased how their services put in practice and not only in principle, the UN Convention guidelines on the rights of persons with disabilities. As Mr. Kalopisis mentioned, as essential ingredients of these services is the empowerment of uh, the individual with disabilities uh, in being active partners in the decision making of their lives. Moreover, uh, Mrs. Uh, Klinov Galina underlined the importance of a systemic approach towards uh, this deinstitutionalization, de which includes the development of services and frameworks and the collaboration of authorities with civil society organizations. Uh, lastly, I would like to, uh, uh, to share with you uh, a key message uh, from uh, our last speaker, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Valeria Venuto. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Venuto shared with us the challenges uh, uh, of uh, the frameworks uh, uh, which uh, in, uh, in Italy, must, but I believe that in most countries uh, uh, the, the legal frameworks uh, lack modernization and it's really important to focus on the reef on, on their reform. Uh, also, uh, it's really important uh, uh, to showcase examples as uh, the example from, uh, uh, from Pressy uh, on how services for persons with disabilities have moved uh, to a digital transformation to support uh, the persons with disabilities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Constantina. I think you managed to grasp the essence of uh, each of the speakers' presentations. Um, I would like myself also to thank the speakers. It's not easy to present uh, uh, your expertise in such a short time, and especially in front of a screen. Uh, this is not a traditional way of organizing conferences that we have, but uh, I still believe that uh, it's a very relevant uh, uh, moment to share experiences um, also in a, in a different uh, and in a difficult moment. Um, yeah, so I would like to wish uh, good luck to, to all of the speakers with their uh, work so far uh, in challenging times. 
Um, I good luck also to Valeria for her uh, application. I know uh, in the situation in Italy is not very easy at the moment, uh, nor uh, nor it is in, in other countries. And uh, thank you very much to to all the participants. Um, the conference of ESPD or the series of events will go on in the in the next day. Um, so feel free to have a look at um, the conference program, which you will find online or on the conference app. Uh, also remind you that on the conference app, you will find more information on the speakers, uh, their bios, uh, their contact details. If you're interested to get in touch with them, I saw in the chat that uh, some people um, already raised a few questions or would like to, to have more details on, on the experiences shared so far. Um, so do not hesitate to have a look at the chat. And um, from the ESPD side, um, I myself and Constantina as well, we remain available in case you have any uh, issue or any further question. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, uh, I wish you all a very nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.